Number 14. is an optimization problem. So it says you plan to make a box with a square base and lid with largest possible volume with a surface area of 140 inches squared. It says notice the last part of this problem is on the next page. If the square base of the box is x inches wide, determine a formula for v of x for the volume of the box in cubic inches. Your function should contain the variable x and may not contain any other variables. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the box in question. So this box has a lid and we're told to use the variable x for the base. And I'm going to use height. You could also use um, y for the height, but I'm just going to use h. And we know that the volume of this box is x squared h. We were also told that this box has to have a surface area of 140 inches squared. So similarly to the perimeter on the last problem, I know that surface area is from adding up the areas of all the pieces of the box. <clears throat> so the surface area, there's a base which is going to be x squared. The lid will also be x squared, so I have two of those. The area of each side is xh, and there are four of those, and this must equal 140. So to get this formula in just x, I need to figure out what h is and substitute. So I'm going to solve this for h. So 4xh will equal 140 minus 2x squared, and technically speaking, I can divide this entire expression by 4x and create a fraction, but since I kind of know derivatives are going to probably be in my future, it would make a lot more sense if I divided each piece by 4x. So 140 divided by 4x minus 2x squared divided by 4x. So this is actually going to reduce to 70 over 2, so I'm going to get 35 over x because 140 divided by 4 should be 35. The 2's here cancel, so I get 1 half, and my x cancels one of my x's, so I just end up with x over 2. So now, when I go back and write my new volume equation, volume is x squared times 35 over x minus x over 2, and once again, since I know derivatives are in my future because it's calculus, I'm going to go ahead and distribute this x squared. So when I distribute it here, one of my x's cancel, and I just get 35x minus x cubed over 2. So if I have to take the derivative of this, it's going to be really easy to do it of this function. So now, part b says, well, determine a domain which makes sense and explain why you chose the domain that you chose. So since we're in variable x, the domain are, is going to be the values that of x that are allowed to be plugged in. So because the surface area of this box has to be 140, there's no way x can be 0. Because if I plug 0 in here, I get a volume of 0, which means there's no box at all. So x could be close to 0, but it cannot include 0. So now to find the upper limit of the domain, we need to make sense of this. So that means, first of all, x and h both have to be positive numbers. So what would happen if I let x get as big as it possibly could, but I let h get as small as it possibly could? So what would happen if I let h approach 0? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my equation for h and I'm going to set it equal to 0. And the value that comes out of this will tell me what the biggest value x could be if h was 0. So then I'll know just not to include it. I'll go up to that number but not include that number. So I'm going to take my height equation 
and I'm going to set it equal to zero. And the constraint, which is what this was, everything in pink here, that's usually what your domain is going to come out of. It's telling you what the limitations are based on the context of the problem, and you want to use that to find your domain. So now I've got that 35 over x equals x over 2, so 70 equals x squared, so the square root of 70 would equal x. So that means we're going to let x go up to the square root of 70, but we're not going to let it equal the square root of 70. And so if I just wanted to be a little bit explicit, right, as h goes to 0, x is going to the square root of 70, and x must be positive, right, and h must also be positive. There's a part C on this question. So part C says, we'll determine the large of it, largest possible value, volume of such a, a box, and you must use calculus to verify that your volume is indeed the largest possible volume. So we have to find our critical value and then verify that it is the absolute maximum. So I'm going to copy over my equation for volume that we simplified from part A. And now I need to get my critical values. So I do that by taking the derivative And then we're going to set this equal to 0. So 35 will equal 3 halves x squared. 70 over 3 will equal x squared. So the square root of 70 over 3 will equal x. So this is my critical value. It is in the domain that I found on the previous page. So using our domain of 0 to the square root of 70, I need to now verify what type of critical value that this is. So I have an option. I can either use the first derivative test or the second derivative test. They both will work and get me to the answer, but usually we decide which one to use based on whether the derivative is going to get better if I keep taking it, or is the derivative going to get worse? So since I did my algebra this way, if I look at my first derivative here, this is a straight up power rule problem. So I actually think the derivative is going to get nicer. So if I use the second derivative test, the double prime of x is just going to be negative 3x. And this is negative everywhere on our domain. So it's concave down. So that means we actually have a relative maximum. So I know what type of extrema that I found. Now I need to verify that this is an absolute extrema. So since there was exactly one critical value on our domain of 0 to square root of 70, then x equals the square root of 70 over 3 must be an absolute extrema. So you're allowed to invoke this statement if this is true. If you find exactly one critical value on your domain, then that value is some type of absolute extrema. Notice I did not write absolute maximum here because the statement by itself simply says it's an absolute extrema. It does not tell you what type of extrema you had. 
So it is 100% necessary that you either do first or second derivative test here. Now at the end of the problem, I'm gonna show you what this would look like if you chose to do first derivative test. Since I did this, and I know that my extrema is a relative maximum, I can then conclude that this is an absolute maximum. But you can't say this and claim maximum if you haven't done this. So this is why I wrote this in pink, because those two things go together. So now that we know we have an absolute maximum, we can now find the maximum volume. So the maximum volume is to take our original volume equation and plug our critical value into that. So I get 35 times the square root of 70 over 3 minus 1 half times the square root of 70 over 3 cubed and this is going to be in inches cubed and I'm done. If you chose in lieu of the first derivative test, I'm going to kind of you could have done the first derivative test. So the first derivative test would say, well, we have a number line, right? Our domain was 0 to the square root of 70, and our critical value was square root of 70 over 3. This was for v prime, so we need to know what you're plugging in. And then I need to test a value in each interval. So if I were to choose x equals 1, then v prime of 1 would be 35 minus 3 halves, which is in fact a positive value. If I pick a value in here, so let's see, the square root 70 divided by 3 is about 23. The square root of that is about 4.8, so I could pick 5. V prime of 5 is 35 minus... 75 over 2 because I would get 25 times 3 is 75. Oops, sorry, right here. 25 times 3 is 75 divided by 2, and this is actually going to give me a negative number. So we can see here that the function is increasing and then decreasing, so this would also give me a relative max, and then I could conclude via this statement it's an absolute max and then plug it in and finish the problem. So you have two options. Um, in this case, because the derivative was so easy to take, I only had to evaluate one number and check the sign of it, whereas on the first derivative test, I had to evaluate multiple numbers. So for things like polynomials that require a power rule derivative, I'd plow through and do the second derivative. For things like rational expressions, where you had to use a quotient rule, or you have a product rule or a chain rule, and it looks like the derivative is going to get more complicated to keep going, I would just stick with the first derivative test.